G'day. Welcome to Nevada. I had a very spiritual experience last week where I learned to talk in tongues. Comes out, whatever comes out. That's it. The Holy Spirit's coming upon you. The Holy Spirit is coming upon you right now. And to teach you how to spot a person faking glossolalia. And I have decided to convert to Christianity. As this being my first video as a Christian, I thought I'd attack the disgusting nature of Australian secular universities by responding to a video brought to you by Patricia Engler, a highly educated homeschooled woman who completed a Bachelor of Science with distinction in a liberal Canadian university and now works with Answers in Genesis. Although Answers in Genesis doesn't tell us where she got her education from, but I believe her. She's clearly a scientist. There's a lot of preamble to this video, so I'll skip that and get to the meat of it. She talks about the Australian wildlife to paint a beautiful, beautiful picture and to point out how our God-designed native fauna distinguishes Australia from other countries. As completely un-Canadian as I found Australian universities to be, however, I soon realised that campuses in Australia and Canada do bear some striking similarities. Take, for instance, the bulletin boards. From the many messages selling secular sexuality, to the posters promoting everything from Bible studies to pub crawls to yoga classes, the ideas posted in Australia and Canada couldn't have been more similar. Oh, that's disgusting. How dare these awful sexual humanists demand equality within the eyes of the law. We all know that the least harmful way to promote the proper way to prevent out-of-wedlock babies is to marry people off as young as possible and to keep them together regardless if they are happy or not. Despite the overwhelming scientific evidence that gender and sexual identity is innate and unchanging, it is clearly goes against God's design. So the least damaging thing that we can do is to shame, humiliate, guilt and forcibly suppress the evils of same-sex attraction. Clearly homosexuality is a sin because despite our best efforts to save these people through prayer and love, people who are afflicted with this curse die due to higher suicide rates than the national average, which clearly has nothing to do with our behaviour. And don't get me started on these disgusting pub crawls. The imbibement of excessive alcohol is an evil thing, going against God and his design. We need to put a stop to destructive cultural practices, such as allowing educated people being able to do with their body what they want to do. It is so destructive that some people will go and hang out with their friends, drink a few beers and meet new people. It is much better that they stay in a group that prays to God and learn all about the Bible, even though they may not have any interest in it. Because God is good and we need to love and praise him or we will go to hell. Yoga is worse though, in my opinion. Even though it is a genuine form of exercise, gives people a social life, is excellent for strengthening and relaxation, it goes against God, and I might conveniently ignore how it almost has nothing to do with worshipping another deity when done in a secular setting. While I didn't see any Wiccan chaplains advertised in Australia, like I did in Canada, I did pass a palm reading sign on one campus and an invitation to weekly classes about discovering the divine nature within on another. This nature worshipping has to stop. We must worship God who created nature, then destroyed it because he wasn't happy with it by flooding the world and starting again. And no atheists, he didn't kill innocent people, even though six-month-old babies were sinners. Read your Bible. And the animals were destroyed because they were just as sinful as the humans because... Because they were. All animals became sinful after Eve ate of the fruit. Because her sin made all animals sin. Because it makes perfect sense that Eve's action should mean that God should punish everything that was alive at that time and thereafter. If you don't understand that, I'm sorry, you're going to have to read your Bible. So, if advertisements around campuses are any indication, Australian and Canadian cultures both base their thinking on the same fatal foundation, man's word instead of God's word. 
I'd learned about the consequences of that in the first seminar by Ken Ham I'd heard as a teenager. I'd seen the effects of those consequences at Canadian universities, and now I was seeing them again here. In fact, like the cartoons I found mocking Christianity in Canadian campuses, drawings I observed in Australian universities revealed how Australia too not only dismisses God's word, but also actively rejects it. This also needs to stop. God's word is incredibly powerful. He wants to care for us, protect us, and give us a moral way to live. For example, he cares so much that he tells women how to submit to their husbands so they can avoid being abused by them. He protected the Israelites by killing the firstborn sons of Egypt. And his morals are so true to the extreme, he tells us how we should treat our slaves. The fact that Australian universities actively reject God for their immoral sexual desires is a sign of our end times. I mean, they think that making people happier and healthier is a much more important thing than pleasing God. It's utterly selfish. God, in his infinite wisdom and love, needs constant praise from us so he knows that we love him. It is utterly unselfish to spend huge chunks of your time praising God. What about your eternal souls, everyone? What if you were wrong? One illustration in an art display, for instance, depicted a human figure hanging from a cross-like gallows, and surrounding the gallows were the words, love, no thanks. How dare they! God is pure love and totally unconditional. All you have to do is praise him and follow Jesus. And if you don't, you'll go to hell. See, God's love is unconditional because he doesn't want you to go to hell. A floor below, I also spotted a banner for a play about Christian evangelization being white man's agenda. I didn't know it yet, but this connection between Christianity and negative political programs would continue reappearing at universities I visited in country after country. These people clearly don't know their history. Christianity was spread throughout the world due to the truth of the Bib Bible and not due to warfare, slavery, lies, bribery, oppression of indigenous people, spoils of war, or anything like that. It's the truth of the Bib Bib Bible, Bible. How dare they suggest anything other than that? Oh. As a student in Canada myself, I too had heard more than one professor link Christianity to terrible right-wing politics. I also have no idea where that comes from. All that Christians want is to maintain freedom of speech, personal responsibility, and the correct way of living under God. The regressive left are the ones that want to do crazy things, like let the LGBT alphabet soup demand they push the gay agenda by letting them get married, and they demand divorces should happen. Divorce should never happen, because it is a crime against God, even though if there is abuse in the relationship. God doesn't like divorce. Also, the crazy left kills babies and they talk about this bodily autonomy. If they didn't want kids, they shouldn't have sex. Personal responsibility is a thing. Then they demand we pay for their kids. Well, they shouldn't have had a child before they were ready, shouldn't they? Personal responsibility is a thing, and if they didn't want the baby, they should just get rid of it via abort. Adoption, of course. We need to stop killing babies by telling them that abstinence is only the way to go. Even though it is linked to higher STIs, higher teen pregnancy, and poverty. Anyone who disagrees with me should shut up. Also, the left suppresses free speech by telling us that we have to ignore God's word, by forcing us to call people by a different gender than what they are born with. They persecute Christians with organisations such as the Freedom From Religion Foundation, who forces out politicians and courts to stop praying when the session starts. Yet they had the temerity to demand the Satanists should be allowed to do it if we are doing it. They shouldn't be allowed to speak like this. I demand they must not be allowed to speak against Christ and God. By doing so, they suppress our free speech. One way Christian students must learn how to defend their faith then is to understand which political conclusions don't flow from a biblical worldview and which do flow from a secular worldview. But more on that another time. She continues to talk about more of God's beautiful creatures you can find in Australia for a bit longer.
The link to this video is in the description below if you do not believe me. The second thing which leapt out at me was God's unbelievable creativity in connecting me with the right Christian contacts. Sometimes I met students at churches, other times I found Christians by showing up to Bible studies advertised around campus. But the most memorable connection happened at a university where I'd been futilely wandering around a dead-end corridor praying to meet a Christian. Usually I explored campuses while cleverly disguised as a normal young person. But this time, the massive green backpack I wore containing six months worth of travel gear lent me a conspicuousness comparable to having a live pig strapped to my back. But then I heard a voice call, are you looking for someone? So I turned around and there was this lady there with dark hair and light overalls. And I explained that I was looking for information about being a Christian student on campus. So she said, oh, well, I'm a Christian student. And she connected me with a campus ministry leader that I could interview. Oh, how amazing is God? He called a Christian woman in a highly populated area to help another Christian person, even though in Australia, over 50% of the population is Christian. It's so bizarre that happened. What were the chances that that could have happened? Now, while talking to the campus ministry leaders, chaplains, and students around Australia, I brought up the same four questions which I would continue asking Christian students around the world. Number one, what are the challenges of being a Christian student here? Two, what are the opportunities? Three, what's your advice for a first-year Christian student? And finally, how can the church support Christian students better? Such important questions for first-year students. We have to make sure that we give them the ability to hear God's words and remind them that science doesn't know everything, despite all the evidence pointing to God not actually existing. Oh, I'm sorry, God, my atheist side just came out. Please forgive me. I will go punish myself later. Often, Australians answered the first question by describing how Australia, like Canada, embraces a relativistic pluralism. In other words, the consensus is that there's no absolute truth, no exclusively correct religion, and no one way to be right. The attitude Christian students are most likely to face when encountering their faith in is something along the lines of, you be you, but don't try to tell me how to be me. Ultimately, this is further evidence that Australia has staked its culture on the wrong foundation, subjective human opinion instead of the word of God. I know, this is horrifying. Why can't people see that all we're trying to do is spread the word of God? We just want them to be safe in heaven with us. Humans are so arrogant to think that their culture is better without the one true God, which has to be true because the Bible says so. I mean, God, the creator of the universe, the Lord Almighty, made me specially so I could worship him. How humble is that, knowing that I was created to worship him? This illustrates the enormous need for Christian students to build their intellectual foundations through learning apologetics, the logical defense of the Christian worldview. If students are prepared to defend the foundation of scripture, their faith will be far more resistant to attacks arising from a culture which founds its thinking on man's word instead of God's. Man's word is so destructive. Don't they care about their own souls and eternal lives? Clearly they don't, because they think they're only of their happiness and ensuring everyone is happy and safe. The only true happiness and safety is with God. For example, in Job 5.17, it says, Blessed is the one whom God corrects, so do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. See, if we only did what God tells us to do, we would be happy. If we don't, God will punish us, which is totally okay. Those atheists who think he's abusive and are stupid and have never felt his true love. In Psalm 37, 7, it says, Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Going against God is wicked and destructive. So we should go with God's word and condemn these people who say that being gay is not a sin, that educating people in secular science is good, and evolution is real. Besides, what did science do for us anyway? By the way, we should go back to listening to this wonderful woman of God who was able to travel from Canada to Australia. Isn't God great?
Consistently, when I asked questions three and four to Australian Christian students to find out how they keep their faith in such a secular culture, they would point to the need for a strong Christian support network or interpersonal foundations. Specifically, most answers revolved around Christian students' need for three types of community. First, students extolled the benefits of plugging into a Christian peer group on campus. I agree. Being able to allow us to defend ourselves from the indoctrination of secularism is the biggest thing that we can do. Gathering together to remind ourselves how great God is, is a wonderful way to ward off this secular indoctrination. Remembering my own Christian peer community at university, I could attest to the importance of having Christian friends for prayer, mutual encouragement, and an ongoing reminder that I was never alone in my beliefs. Amen! I read the infallible word of God every night, the Bible. I do this to remind me that I am not alone. Everything in that book is divinely inspired and true, the unwavering word of God. Second, Australian Christians expressed students' need for connections with godly adult mentors, confirming what I'd learned from my interviews in Canada. Third, I repeatedly heard the importance of students plugging themselves into a local church. A retired Australian professor, in fact, told me that not attending church is the biggest mistake Christian students make. We can't let these students drop their guard and actually think evil, satanic thoughts about what sort of God our Lord and Saviour really is. He is great and wonderful and loving, despite what atheists think and what the cherry-picked Bible verses they take say. We look at the whole book and anything we disagree with is either from Satan or written by fallible men. Why can't atheists understand that? It's not like God wrote it himself. Importantly, some Australians also emphasised the urgency for students to spend time with God, not only through church or campus ministries, but also through vibrant times of personal devotions, prayer and scripture study. That's the importance of spiritual foundations. We need to make sure that they don't have time to talk with people who aren't Christian. We can't have them thinking wrong and evil thoughts. Any time they spend not doing either their university work or praying is wasted in the eyes of the Lord. So ultimately, despite our shared Commonwealth background, from the moment I hopped off the plane and strode to the wrong side of the car in Australia, I'd pegged Australia and my home country as polar opposites. But three weeks and 1,700 kilometers later, I realized that despite being a world apart, Australia and Canada culturally share a lot in common. For instance, both Australian and Canadian universities revealed how these nations have abandoned their Christian roots and based their mainstream thinking on man's word rather than God's. That's wrong. How dare humanism become mainstream? I'm totally against their philosophy of treating people with love, care and respect and putting humans' happiness above that of God's. God is more important than you will ever be and only true happiness lies in God's servitude. This results in Australia, like Canada, being a relativistic nation which opposes biblical teaching. So Australian students increasingly need apologetics training or intellectual foundations to defend their worldview as much as I did as a student in Canada. Because as we all know, we need to fight tooth and nail for God because despite him being all powerful and omnipresent, he needs us to fight for him so we can show him how much we love him. He knows we do, but he needs us to do so because he wants us to. Like Canadians, Australians also confirmed students' need for connections to godly peers, mentors, and local churches. That's their interpersonal foundations. As well as consistent time spent with God, or spiritual foundations. Altogether then, while Australia and Canada might differ on details like koalas, kangaroos, and kookaburras, the big picture of culture, spirituality, and Christian students' experiences in both nations looks uncannily alike. She continues to talk about watching her next video, how to find her on social media, and how to use my God-given critical thinking skills to defend the most loving and forgiving God that will send me to hell for not believing in him. I hope you enjoyed watching my new Christian content, and don't forget, don't give yourself a ticket to hell. 
I just want to say a special thank you for my blessed patrons who supported me on my journey back to Christianity, especially my $10 Redback Spider patrons Aided Furball, Lauren Hart, Amanda Vogue, Mary Civitano, and Ross Devereux. Another big thank you to my $20 Platypus patrons, Atheist Pastor and Jessa G. Also this week, the good Lord told me to start a new $35 patron tier, which is the Irukandji tier, which you get to choose a video topic. Praise be to bullshitting for an entire video. I hope you guys had fun and thank you for joining me.